head injury in sports uh, was first introduced to me through a Dutch colleague who had, uh, was doing research on what they call football uh, in the Netherlands, and um, uh, he, he had developed uh, an impressive set of data uh, dealing with both the effects of head injury of uh, uh, headers and of uh, a concussion, and then of course the combinations thereof. And um, from then on, my my awareness and appreciation of the problem uh, has grown. Um, and so I'm I'm just very very pleased to to be able to be involved uh, with the. Uh, concussion program here um, at OHSU that uh, Jim has developed. Uh, I, th I think I think he's just doing some wonderful things for the youngsters uh, and their future in our community. So I'm going to uh, talk about the consequences. Now let's see if, if ah that's the right one. The uh, the neuropsychological aspects of uh, mild traumatic uh, brain injuries and concussions by and large go under the heading of uh, mild traumatic brain injury. Uh, most, most of them uh, are okay. Um, and I too had some uh, uh, historical data. I think uh, we, all of us in the field have been intrigued to see how uh, our knowledge has progressed. When I first uh, began seeing patients uh, several decades or more ago, um, the uh, people were not considered to have received an injury unless they were actually unconscious. And uh, with our growing knowledge, our growing sophistication, our closer observations, uh, we now know that uh, a concussion, mild TBI, can occur with any trauma-induced mental status change. And it can be with or without loss of consciousness, but all you need is that change in mental status, dizziness, headache, uh, confusion, even passing for a, a, a minute or two, uh, is, it tells you that that person has received some kind of injury to the brain. Okay, uh, the, uh, the, the data here, the top data uh, are not on sports injuries. They tell you something about the driving habits of the people in these countries. Uh, the interesting uh, piece of information is, for this group is on the, the bottom here, the 1995. Um, measuring uh, the prevalence of mild TBI, and already they were finding that uh, 30 to 37 percent, approximately a third of high school and university students had received uh, a, uh, at least one uh, mild head injury. Okay. And um, of course, the most the, the most important thing about the whole story is what kind of outcome can we expect? And uh, fortunately, about 80 to 90 percent have favorable outcomes, and and that means that they pretty much return to where they were prior to the uh, injury. I do not ever use the word recovery. I have um, a bunch of dirty words that I, I don't use. Uh, recovery is one, IQ is another, I'll be glad to talk about that sometime if somebody wants to. Uh, people do not, we, we recover from the measles, we recover from our cuts and bruises. People improve after a head injury. But any time you've had a head injury, it leaves chicken tracks on the brain. So you never get quite back to where you were. But you can have a very favorable outcome. And I'm sure that there's a number of you right here in the audience who've had head injuries, uh, a 
as youngsters, maybe playing in sports, and you are functioning very, very well as adults, and you fall into that 80 to 90 percent favorable group. Uh, whether but for the head injury you would have been a Rhodes Scholar or not, I don't know. Uh, you might not have been interested in, in doing whatever you had to do to become one, so it didn't matter. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, 10 to 20 percent are going to have persistent physical, emotional, or cognitive symptoms, and I'm going to review those. 